In my day job, I am an NHS nurse. I've worked in the NHS for approximately eight years now. Um, I have worked primarily in wards and also the emergency department. I joined the Army Reserves because I wanted the opportunity to develop my nursing career and I also wanted the opportunity to help people all around the world and the Army work in a multitude of countries and deal with a multitude of problems across the world. So the point of the Reserves is um, to provide that capability to the RAF and Defence where the output is required. So to fill those gaps, to, uh, to augment, to provide that reserve capability to uh, wherever the requirement is, uh, whether that's in the UK, whether it's out of area, in support of exercises, deployments, operations, etc. And it's also about fostering the links with uh, local communities, uh, local employers, uh, and making sure that the reservists are actually taking back the strengths and skills that we can give them so that they can be actively employed within their own workspace uh, in the civilian environment. So in the civilian world, I'm an RNLI lifeguard. I work on the beaches around Newquay. So through the training that I've received with the reserves, I feel like I've developed my res resilience and teamwork and this has helped me on the beaches as well as I'm dealing with stressful situations the whole time. Um, so it's different contexts but still have the same feelings and emotions so I've learnt how to deal with them better. So I work at Associated British Ports. Um, I work in port management. I've been with the reserves about four years now and I've been with the RNLI about three years. I'd always wanted to join the forces or um, the Navy, but then I kind of got into a career and started climbing up the ladder and you know, these things kind of go by the wayside. So and then the reserves came up and I thought, well, this is the ideal opportunity to get back to where I wanted to be. My last year was on board HMS 7, uh, which was amazing just to have that difference in uh, from going to work, you can be on a ship for a year, considered really useful for the ship. All that time I was on the helm. For the Golden Jubilee we sailed into Cardiff, which was awesome. Coming past Cambria and just having all the crew come to Cardiff was um, really special. For me, being an army reservist, it's it's nice to have um, a, a, one, a paid uh, hobby, uh, uh, something that you do enjoy. Uh, and also it, it's another circle of friends that you've got. So rather than just being stuck at work uh, with one circle of friends, it gives you an opportunity to, to meet other people and to have different experiences. Um, my next draft from here, I'm looking to be maybe going on one of the destroyers or one of the uh, river patrols, see something new, meet new people, showcase my, my, my art. The skills that the military teach you are highly transferable. One of the main things they teach you is about leadership and command and management, and the ability to take people to complete certain tasks or mission objectives, and I definitely take that into my day job. I actually joined uh, just at the very start of COVID. I found it really frustrating to be sat at home, not being able to help, and I just wanted to see what more opportunities were available to me, travelling the world and, and learning to drive big trucks, all kinds of different vehicles just uh, expanding my skill set really. Absolutely, the, the friendship's the best bit. The people I've met here, uh, it sounds really corny that they're almost family, but you, they're people that you can definitely depend on. And um, they've been there through some fairly tough times already. Uh, yeah, they're great friendships and I'm sure they'll be, they'll be there for a long time. It feels like quite a big break from reality. Like my work's quite nine to five, it's very desk based very computer orientated and this just feels like a break from that. You come around, see friends, get to go and do something really physical, something really different. I mean, you know, handling weapons and things like that that we did on phase one. Uh, you know, that's not something I'm going to come across in my day mm -hmm. job. And it's just it's just the difference really. It's um, doing something completely different. I love the camaraderie, I love all the people that I've met, um, the fact that it's a really different thing to do from my day-to-day -day job and you know there's challenges along the way I, I, I keep fit because I need to te pass my test every year um, and we have fun with sports and the other thing is that um, I really love horses and horse riding and show jumping so I've been really lucky to get involved with the RAF Equestrian Association so I can follow that as well so for me it's all of those things and I never ever think oh now I've got to go I'm like even when it's been full on at home, I'm still, I really get to do this and I love it. So yeah, all of those things. 
If you're looking to join any of the services, then Chefin is the one to, uh, to go for. It's definitely testing, you get loads of opportunities to cook abroad and in the UK. It's a great career. In the civilian world, I am an assistant head teacher at a school in Cornwall. So, so the highlights that I've had sort of been time is been working with aircraft. So I've gone away on uh, two week camps where I've been lucky enough to spend time working with Typhoon jets and sort of doing, talking to pilots and helping them give real world information to help their missions. Uh, yes, yeah, so I really enjoy being in the reserves. I've met lots of lovely people, done some really interesting things that I never would have had a chance to do before. And uh, yeah, it's a really worthwhile way of spending your weekends, uh, holidays and time off. I just wanted something different. Um, I wanted to try something different. I felt like I was missing something. And I think I've definitely found what I wanted to be doing. I've gained a lot of skills and I've definitely gained a lot of friendships here. And I'm a lot happier now because I'm just doing something that I absolutely love doing. So yeah, <laughs> I won't be leaving for a long time. <laughs> I think my favourite thing is just uh, just coming down and seeing everyone. Like it's like a little family down here, and then we always have such a good weekend, and just such a laugh with everyone. If somebody was thinking about joining the army reserves, I would absolutely encourage them to do so. Um, I've only been in 18 months, but I've had a, a huge amount of fun, and I've learnt learnt a load about myself, but also about the army in general. And you also get to do loads of really great adventure training. Um, so far in the army I have done my mountain bike foundation and my ski foundation. I've made some amazing friends, you're part of a really big team which come like a family to you. The best thing about being in the reserves is definitely like the, the family that you have here. At Cambria it's, it's just really nice and relaxed and friendly and uh, welcoming. There's nothing to lose by joining. I'm Hannah Prophet, I'm Programme Excellence Manager at McLaren Automotive and part-time in the Royal Air Force Reserves, I'm an Engineering Officer. The learning and the training that uh, I've been given by the Royal Air Force is uh, world-class. I've had the opportunity to do a lot of adventure training. I've also travelled, I've spent time in um, Norway, the Falklands, working as a team member in a completely different capacity and having the opportunity to do that in such a different environment is something that I really feel that I can bring back to my employer. I'm Catherine. I work at Zodia Markets, which is a cryptocurrency trading business, and I've been serving in the RAF reserves for six years. I think being a small company and being able to support someone in the reserves, so you know, giving me an extra 10 days of paid leave to meet my commitments and being flexible around those obligations that, that I have uh, is absolutely fantastic. I really um, recognise how they are supporting that second career and I'm really, really determined to bring benefit to them as well from that work. Yeah, we are a startup. we're building very rapidly and what we need is people that are, are willing to go the extra mile. If someone's willing to do a reservist career in, in addition to their own, they've already demonstrated that in spades. We have a really motivated employee who is really used to working in challenging and diverse situations and she does that of her own accord in her time outside of work. So bringing all of that experience and opportunity back into the business. My biggest advice to any other employers would be to open up a conversation about how it can work rather than think about why it can't work. Having a reservist in the workforce is a brilliant opportunity to bring a range of experience and skills into the business. Supporting the reserves also sends a signal um, as an employer on what you value, so shared purpose, meeting commitments, those kinds of things. I think there's increasing recognition that people have an identity outside their main employment, whether that's family, community, or a second career. And an employer who can support that uh, is going to have um, loyal employees um, who will probably be with them for longer. So it's good for recruitment and it's good for retention. Uh, I've been very uh, fortunate to be invited along to this amazing trip to, to watch the Reserve Marines in training um, as part of our commitment to supporting the Armed Forces having signed the Covenant. We came over to find out what the Reserves do when they're here on course to get an understanding of the training content and why it's so important to support the Reserves. I think the experience has been absolutely extraordinary. It's something I've actually always wanted to come to Norway and the fact that we get to experience something that most people will never ever see, it's been really such a privilege. Being in the Arctic Circle and to learn more 
about the Royal Marines and about the reservists, that was very interesting. We had the opportunity to do some cross-country skiing and downhill skiing. We did snow walking with snowshoes uh, in the evening. We slept under the canvas and did a bit of survival training. We have learned about weapons, we've learned about vehicles, we have built a 10-man tent. We've been pulling a lot of um, pokes, which is the, the, the commando word for sledge. Very, very heavy pokes, I would add. A reservist is going to bring back um, very, very strong leadership. I think they're ultimately going to be a, a very powerful role model for your organisation. I think they're undoubtedly going to bring energy, they're going to bring commitment, they're going to bring passion for everything they do, because these are the things that I've seen this week. A lot of reservists I found who have day jobs, family do and then they take the time out to come and work as reservists for the Royal Marines. Phenomenal de dedication. Their leadership skills in particular is attractive. Their discipline, uh, their commitment and their willingness to learn and support as a team. Of course, when, when you think of the armed forces in general, you know it's going to be a very organised environment. But the level of planning that goes into every single thing and the logistics behind everything, I've been very impressed. The highlight of this trip has been meeting people from all walks of life, different spectres and just working together uh, in unity. The highlight of this trip for, for me has been um, the overnight. It, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity to, to go off with some peers and spend some time speaking to, to the reservists, working kind of alongside them. The guys have been incredible that have been looking after us, like the team of guys, they've been brilliant. The highlight of this trip for me has been the people, the people from the reserves, the, the team behind the planning, the, the team at Lowlands and of course the, the employers. The relationships that I've built through this, the knowledge, the experience that I can take from the other employers and apply to my own role um, and the work that I do within communities is invaluable, it's priceless. The learning and the training that uh, I've been given by the Royal Air Force is world class. The RF Reserves has equipped me to deal with situations which I wouldn't have otherwise been able to deal with as effectively as I can. I see members of staff who have connections with the reserve forces, I see them as, as tremendous um, ambassadors for the forces to start with, but these people bring transferable skills to us, they're passionate and they're driven to succeed. Working as a team member in a completely different capacity and having the opportunity to do that in such a different environment is something that I really feel that I can bring back to my employer. We have a really motivated employee who is really used to working in challenging and diverse situations and she does that of her own accord in her time outside of work. So bringing all of that experience and opportunity back into the business. I kind of weighed up both options to join the reserves or regulars, but I was quite happy with my civilian career. People just tend to enjoy being around him, to tend to want to work with him. I'm very happy with what he does. Uh, on the CV was the fact that he was an RAF reservist, so it's a big tick in the box as far as we're concerned. And the teamwork I think that he, he appears to bring from the RAF is, is very, very valuable to us. I'm currently completing a postgraduate certificate in change management. And this is a qualification that's been provided to me by the RAF. As a mentor within the organisation, I strive to impart these skills and qualities onto more junior members of my team and indeed to the wider organisation. I'm a self-employed event planner. I'm a self-employed guest house proprietor. I'm a self-employed groundsman handyman. I'm also an RAF reservist. I think being a small company and being able to support someone in the reserves, being flexible around those obligations that, that I have uh, is absolutely fantastic. I really um, recognise how they are supporting that second career and I'm really, really determined to bring benefit to them as well from that work. Yeah, we are a startup. we're building very rapidly and what we need is people that are, are willing to go the extra mile. If someone's willing to do a reservist career in, in addition to their own, they've already demonstrated that in spades. For me, it's the organisation, it's the, the approach to logistics, the being able to work under pressure, that's really transferable. Your organisation will benefit from exceptional training, exceptional development that you would pay many times over if you went to the private market. Brody Engineering has signed the Armed Forces Covenant. I believe passionately in the synergy of the Royal Air Force and Commerce working together 
to develop Scotland's economy. He's a very professional person, very organised, the sort of things that you'd expect or you'd hope that the RAF can do. And it's, it's been true, that's what he's brought to us. I'm on Exercise Aquila, um, it's, it's in the northern region of Norway, near Bardafoss. Um, it's a two week cold weather um, exercise aimed at equipping marines with all the necessary skills they need to survive in extremely harsh environments. We're here doing cold weather warfare training so that if in the future anything kicks off in the high north, we can filter in with current commander units and um, help, them, help them fight any threats, basically. Because the Royal Marines are the cold weather warfare specialists, if um, we don't train in places like Bardafoss, we will not be able to be deployable in cold weather and we won't be effective. So if we came up against and got deployed with the regulars at anywhere that's cold, we just we wouldn't be effective. So we have to be here, we have to train. Today it was just, um, we had some lectures in the morning about how to use the kit, the tents, how to feed ourselves, how to admin ourselves, how to dress ourselves, and then in the afternoon it was going to more depth and this evening we're packing getting ready to go on um, to an exercise tomorrow. We're only two days into exercise Aquila so far um, but the food is absolutely amazing. The biggest highlight so far is, is just seeing Norway really and being out here in the cold. It's a bit of an experience. The highlight of exercise Aquila so far has been, because we've only been here for two days, it was a flight in. As soon as I saw Norway I was, uh, I was ready to get stuck in. Seeing Force of Friendly employers here is good because um, Often for lads it's quite hard to get out here because of their jobs, so for forces friendly employers to actually come out and see this, it's, um, it gives them an insight in what we do, what we go through and how we balance our work and this work, which is quite, <laughs> it's quite a task. I think it's fantastic and I think what's really important is um, employers to get, getting to see things first hand and knowing exactly what they're employees are going through. If you're considering becoming a reservist, I'd say train hard, sort your admin out, because there's a lot of admin, especially when you're working full time. Apply for it, go through the process, and then you'll, you'll find out on the way through if it's for you or not, but you won't know until you, you apply. Get signed up, do it while you're young, um, and make the absolute most of it. Um, my only regret is, is not joining up at a younger age. Hi, I'm Hannah. I work here at Marshall Aerospace in Cambridge and I'm also an RF reservist. This is Hangar 2, our components bay. I'll give you a look around. I'm with 2623 Squadron, which is a regiment reserve squadron at RF Honington. It's amazing. I love it there. So Marshalls are amazing with me being in the RAF reserves. I found them on the Armed Forces Covenant. Particularly in my interview, I remember explaining that I was an RAF reservist and um, Amy, my manager, she said to me, she was like, we'll support you with whatever you want to do. And for me, that is all I ask for. We've gained somebody that's got commitment and passion and drive and, you know, the, the ability and wants to learn, um, but also that dedication to do something outside. It's so special to me to be part of the reserves and to be able to share that with my employer and them really be interested is for me the main thing. It's intriguing and the team like to you know, ask her questions about what she's done. She done the King's Coronation which was fascinating and I think every one of us watched it just so we could see if we could point Hannah out. And she brings that enthusiasm and that practical capability to the team and the different skills. I never thought that I would want a job which did actually interlink with the RAF. I always thought I wanted them to be separate, but it's so interesting seeing the work that's done here and actually knowing that it does link a little bit into what I do with the RAF. And especially the first time I actually saw a C-130 was when I came here for my interview. So that was quite a cool like little buzz moment. And now I sit in my office and see them outside my window every day. To me, being in the RAF reserves was going onto the ranges, doing, you know, the general kind of CQB, the activities that we do on the weekends. But now it gives that so much bigger picture than just, oh, 
I buy parts for planes. Like, I buy parts for planes that helps them enable to save lives and make a change. So that's definitely something I hadn't thought about till recently. And then actually it's like, okay, like this is a pretty cool job we get to do.